Moving on, next we saw Jungle Boy give a little interview, have a little discussion. I wouldn't really call this a promo. He wasn't promoting anything. He was just talking about his match at Full Gear in a cage with Luchasaurus. It was a nice little discussion with him. He's sitting there with his bloody face saying how happy he was, how pleased he was to have had this match. Uh, pretty much thanking Luchasaurus, saying that you know they accomplished something together, and if they were going to do something like that, uh, he was glad to have done it with his former friend, now sworn enemy, and he was happy to have kicked his ass. And like I said, um, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, I think he has incredible potential. Um, I'm a general fan of his. I don't mind watching his matches. I do wish, you know, he gave more fiery promos. This, again, wasn't a promo. It was just a discussion. But it was good. When Jack Perry gets to just sit down and talk and be himself, he's not bad. Uh, when he's in front of a microphone wanting to actually or needing to actually do a promo hype package, you know, it leaves a little bit to be desired. But this was good for what it was. A nice little discussion after his big win at Full Gear. To remind you, you know, Jungle Jack Perry won and he's around. Next up was the final of the World Title Eliminator Tournament. This saw all Ego Ethan Page with his manager Stokely Hathaway taking on Ricky Starks. Ethan Page is led to the ring by Stokely Hathaway. There, Hathaway is yelling to shut the music off. That he's going on and on about how Page is the next number one contender. Uh, Page takes the mic and says to the crowd, "You don't like that? I don't care." When this match is over, Ricky Starks will be crying in the middle of the ring, and all you Chicago crybabies can just join in with them. Uh, Stark hits the ring more bandaged up than any. I mean, he looked like half of a mummy. I mean, uh, definitely. I mean, look, he was attacked by Lance Archer backstage just a short time ago in this tournament, beaten to hell, trapped under a garage door. Archer being so much larger, but of course, Archer went down to Starks in that match. Starks has been on fire, so Archer tried to take him out, hurt him as much as he could, and he comes out with his left shoulder. His chest and his ribs completely taped up. It almost looked like a half of a shirt with one sleeve. I mean, it was really, really bad. Really putting over the idea that, of how injured Ricky Starks is going in here and how much he's going to have to overcome. And look, Ethan Page is a big guy. I don't know if it translates to you on TV how big this guy is, but he is large. He is ridiculously strong. And this was your classic big guy versus small guy matchup. Ricky Starks fought from the bottom just about all match long. And it was his sheer will and determination and fighting spirit, you know, fighting spirit that we've brought in from Japan over the years to kick out of devastating moves to keep going. Page's story was very similar to Jake Hager in his match with Orange Cassidy. He was very overconfident. I mean, he did muscle Starks around. He did. But he didn't make pinfall covers nearly as much as I think he could or should have in this match. And that ended up costing him because every time Starks was allowed a breather, every time Ego took the chance to do a muscle pose or lay across the top rope in the, in the corner in the, on the turnbuckles, uh, Starks would get more fired up and get the desire to continue to go. And that's what he did. Um, now, Ricky Starks, you all might know, you should know, I would assume, loves to use the Beauchambeau, it's called. He could not hit that. He tried that once on Page, couldn't get him in it. Makes sense. Page is so much bigger than him. So he relied on his backup move, which is the spear. He hit that two times throughout the matchup towards the end. That was when he hit it the second time. And then right after the, that second spear, he hit it a third time. And that's what got him the victory. It was his non-quit attitude. And that's what I like about Starks, you know. So they're putting Starks in our faces, telling us that he is, he is just highly spirited, that he is incredibly driven. And he, he's been the big man killer here. Now, Starks is not tiny. He's not like some tiny little guy. But he overcame several guys. You know, Lance Archer, uh, all ego Ethan Page. I mean, he came over, he overcame several guys in this tournament. I mean, Ethan Page beat the great Bandito. And Ricky Starks beat, beat Page. So the, this is really told the story of Ricky Starks. He's headed to Winter is Coming on December 14th, the day after yours truly's birthday. You can use my email to send any type of gift you would like to give me. <laughs> um, but that should be a good show. I, I'm waiting to see the build on it. We got, you know, a couple weeks to go in it, like two and a half weeks until we get there. So I'm waiting to see the continual build of Ricky Starks. It's been pretty good. I know a lot of fans out there have been calling for Starks to get the push. You gotta push him, right? Look, watch wrestling and like it for what it is, or just don't watch it. I had to tell myself that.
If you can't enjoy what you're seeing, then just don't watch it. Don't watch it and bitch and tell us what you would do if you were the booker, if you were the booker man. Nobody really cares. All you, I don't want to go into a spiel hill, but all you guys that just want to get together on social media and bitch and complain, it gets tiresome. I was guilty of it as all of you. But I woke up one day, looked in the mirror, asked myself, is this what I sound like? I didn't look in the mirror. I looked at Facebook and Twitter and said to myself, is this me? I listened to Jim Cornette, who I still respect the hell out of. And I said, is this me? I can't do it. So I'm watching this as a fan again, and it is so much more enjoyable. I just want to be a wrestling fan that loves pro wrestling. And if you will give that a try, folks, I promise you, you'll be a happier person. I promise you. But I am, I'm waiting to see the continual build of Ricky Starks as he's going to go into a match with the great MJF, the new AEW heavyweight champion. Looks like he's going to be his first big challenger. So I can't wait to see the build on that. And I hope you're willing to see the build on it too. Let's, let's instead of criticizing what are they going to do, they're going to throw it up. Let's give them a chance and see what they are going to do. Okay, let's give them a chance. But a big win in a in a pretty good big man small man matchup. The next part of the show went into uh, Jade Cargill. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. When I saw this hyped online, I was a little worried about it. Look, every damn wrestling company in the world uses some type of celebrity, tries to, to ride the coattails, try to get some hype off celebrity. I mean, my God, at one point, WCW had RoboCop out there in a cage and, and being getting involved in a match. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, the, the bunny or whatever his hell, the hell his name, Bad Bunny over there in WWE and, uh, and, and the Paul Brothers and the countless shit that they do. If AEW, I thought, is going to use Bow Wow, even though I don't know how popular this guy even is anymore. But if they're going to use him to try to get some rub, you can't blame every wrestling company on God's Earth does this. Do I like it? Not really. Do I have to accept that it's part of, of what wrestling does because it's done it forever? Yes. I mean, Andy Kaufman was wildly successful. People still talk about that today. It's not all that successful, but, you know, that's the idea. But I was pleasantly surprised here. They did show the confrontation. I don't know why there was a confrontation. Jade Cargill with her TBS championship getting into an argument with Bow Wow after his concert in Miami. But to her credit, when Renee Paquette interviewed her backstage, said, hey, what can you tell me? What's going on between you and Bow Wow? She's like, I ain't giving any more credence. I ain't giving any more clout to that whack-ass rapper. Loved it. She just brushed it off. Doesn't want anything to do with it. But she does call in her attorney, Mark Sterling, a guy I wouldn't care in the least if he completely disappeared off the face of the earth in regard to wrestling anyway. But he comes in and he confronts Kiara Hogan. Um, after Jade uh, missed this part, Jade announces there's going to be a party, a celebration next week because she doesn't want to do it in Chicago uh, to celebrate her title win with her and the baddies. And that's when Mark Starling comes in and pulls Kiara Hogan aside and asks her to sign something, which she does. I guess she just trusted the guy because she trusts Jade Cargill. She sort of glances at it and, okay, I'm signing this. She goes, just to let you know, this is releasing you from the baddies and that Jade Cargill no longer requires your services. So she's dismissed, she's fired, she's told you're done with Jade Cargill and the baddies. I'm assuming it's because she failed to get Jade Cargill's title off of Nyla Rose when she was carrying it around after she stole it and claimed to be the TBS champion. Uh, surely what it has to be about. But could this lead to Kiara Hogan going somewhere? Starting to bump up the card a little bit, seeing her in some singles matches, maybe getting a shot at the title eventually. I believe something like that will happen over time because I don't know that she's done anything to, to get you know anywhere near the top right now. But maybe this was something telling us, hey, here's what's coming. Tell me in the comment sections what you think about that. Did you want Paige or Starks to win that match? in the title eliminator tournament uh, or somebody altogether different that was in the tournament. Maybe someone like Bandito. Um, what did you think of this Jade Cargill? Did you want to see more of the Bow Wow stuff? I know I didn't. Um, and what do you think about Kiara Hogan? Do you think she's maybe going to start doing bigger things in AEW? I don't know, but I think we have a couple things to look at here that are going to be built for those of you people that want to whine and complain that you don't see enough of that in AEW. You're just not looking.